Hello and good evening and welcome to the Plo Newsroom, episode 20, recorded on Thursday evening, March 21st of the year 2024. You're listening to Philip Bauer from Munich and... Fred van Dijk from Rotterdam. And like you said, Philip, this is a bit of a... A change from normally, because normally we record it somewhere in the afternoon, uh, sometimes, um, well, Fridays, we did some Saturday mornings, I remember. But now, as you see in the background, this is the shadow from my uh, day uh, light lamp on top of me. We're recording in the week, in the evening. Yeah, it's uh, pitch dark outside. On your request. As well. On your yeah, request. because I'm 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 off for business next week in Freiburg, and I will have forgotten everything that we want to talk about. This is going to be, I hope, or we hope, uh, a short episode. Oh, by the way, this is a podcast, obviously about Plone. That's why it's called the Plone Newsroom, and we have our own uh, web uh, corner on Plone.org/newsroom. You can find the episodes there and on YouTube. Yeah. I had to reorder everything last time because we already had like four, four or five. So I created a new page. So I shifted them them back, and we have the latest version, the latest episodes now on the home page again. Okay, so we have uh, the main topic today is a report from a event in Germany called the Plontagung at the University of Gießen. Uh, we have some news, plon news, and no demos of add-ons this time. So we'll try to keep it under 45 minutes. Uh, let's see where we end up. Yeah, the idea was, okay, uh, we, have this, we have these local events, Plon Symposia. Uh, some of them are in English when they're English-speaking, but the Plontagung is back from uh, uh, from a few years uh, hiatus, of course, because of the the, 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 uh, the pandemic. Uh, and then it was very tricky 2023 to start it up again. So it was really cool to see it back. The last uh, one was in 2020, uh, held in Dresden. And the Plontagung also is an event, uh, uh, a German-speaking event, where traditionally a lot of universities, high schools, and other uh, public uh, agencies are, are present, or at least have talks about them. And that's that's a really interesting group uh, uh, for, uh, for of Plone users. Yeah, that's that's the main difference between like a sprint or a conference. That a lot of users of Plone, clients of companies, but also just uh, institutions and people who use Plone are interested in Plone and maybe are not uh, super happy uh, either with. Uh, long distance travels or they don't get the travel funding uh, from their employees or the, the organizations they work for or they're not comfortable uh, speaking or listening to English talks all the time like uh, the Plon conferences. So uh, German event uh, at the University of Gießen. I expected Gießen to be a, a posh, beautiful town in the heart of Hesse. Um, it was uh, it is <laughs> ugly as sin um, so if we if we told you uh, Gießen is nice before and we showed one picture that must have been the only beautiful picture from from Gießen ever probably it, it's 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 not Gießen's fault basically it Gießen was destroyed in the second world war and after the war uh, the Germans didn't do it any favors by uh, turning it basically into a parking lot uh, <laughs> and uh, shopping mall uh, nightmare, uh, but, um, but it's a nice university. Okay, if you, if you do continue with this introduction, because we had a nice city walk on Monday evening, and there the it also wasn't that very flattering because the 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 the, the if I remember and now I say it correctly how Kisin started was by a local lord uh, having his parents or his grandfather or something in a castle further away and he had to pick a new location because his own castle was crumbling so he picked it right in the middle but it was a bit of a swamp yeah it's uh it's in in the middle of a valley basically and then he had to do a lot of work so we were standing in the in the in the market square which is of course very dry nowadays but there yeah. was a small river floating there they, they had to shift it three or four hundred meters away uh, and it was like, yes, interesting. Oh, yeah. And another, I have to repeat this. There was like a, a monument or something which was called the Elephant Hall. Uh, elephant's Ear. Elephant's Ear, a very famous local, also concrete construction, probably yes. from a famous architect after the Second World War because everything was gone. 
Yeah, it's it's also uh, ugly as hell. It's basically a, a bridge over a motorway, motorway, and it has three holes inside. I, I don't know how many holes elephant ears have, but uh, maybe maybe geese's are not really good at mathematics. Yeah, maybe they are. Yeah, they yeah. they have some yeah, famous yeah. Math- mathematicians. On the bright side, there. on the bright side, the facilities were great. We had a very nice, excellent, big, big auditorium. We had really nice breakfast and lunch there. Um, we had a smaller room upstairs uh, for the second presentation room, which was also a very nice and cool sprint room. So the facilities, even yeah, and, though and the countryside, the is architecture. Also nice. Once you leave Gießen, it's it's all fine. <laughs> oh, you can't stop. <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> Let's get to the contents, Philip. Okay, so we there was like a two and a half uh, talk uh, days of conference or a tagung. Uh, we had a couple of talks. Um, some of them were really interesting, um, but nothing really stood out too much. I really like the talks uh, that you and Thomas Shore did, um, uh, ne- like uh, following each other on container stuff. Do you want to elaborate on what? you did there yes well as you said uh, uh it, it's the german uh, uh a german speaking conference uh, uh but of course with uh, uh some some uh, the same people that also would like to go to the to the uh, party from from the plan support companies that go to the plan conference so we were able to how you call it repeat some uh some uh some talks or also do get get a second chance so uh my talk with the introduction uh on on uh, how plone uses containers was a bit of a, a repeat from what i did at the plone conf uh, but i gave a bit i i prepared for more introduction on containers in general where on the plone conf i knew that my audience would be more uh plone and plone community minded so i could show much more of the of how we use plone inside the plone foundation for our, our site so I, I, I stupidly, for myself then, not for the people, but I asked, okay, who, who is completely blank about uh, container technology? And I got four or five hands out of the 25 people. So I also, was you had to do a 101. So no, I was like, okay, am I going to continue my original plan? And yeah, I'll just do my original plan. I'll, I'll, I had about 40 minutes. I'll do 20 minutes generically explaining about what containers are, why they are important, where they're coming from. Uh, and then the, the next 20 minutes, I, I, I dove into uh, our, our repositories on the uh, Plown organization on GitHub, where you can, can openly see how Plown.org is built, how the PlownConf uh, websites are built. Uh, where our, our base containers are uh, uh, as a demonstration of how you can can adapt them to your own uh, use, and uh, and after the the talk, I got a, a thank you from one of the I think from one of the people who raised their hands. Oh, thank you for the introduction. That was really cool. So then I'm like, okay, sorry for the other twenty people. You knew which, what you signed up for. If I say it's an introduction, you will get an introduction. Uh, and for those four or five people, I think they, they I hopefully, I hope they appreciated it to to have a, a kind of overview first. And it was a very good one for uh, the next talk after the break, because yes. then Thomas Shore could, uh, and that was also something I was really interested in, interested in, is to talk about Plon on Kubernetes. And then a few, I could, I saved him a few minutes where he could say this. Uh, oh, Fred said that I'll go to the Kubernetes part. So that was a cool, cool. Uh, also in the in the in the, pro, in the schedule. Uh, uh, where, t- where Thomas cont- could elaborate on on my basic introduction and yeah, then go like into the specifics of of uh, Kubernetes. Yeah, that was uh, me. I'm I'm not very familiar with Kubernetes. That was a bit mind blowing, but uh, really interesting. I, I I work with this stuff like using it, but I, I don't. He orchestrates that because we work for the same client in uh, in a project. Um, yeah, so Thomas is was... a real Thomas is a real sysadmin, and he also yes. gave the sysadmin a uh, view on on deployment and where you can uh, where you can optimize things. And it was also I, I read a book about Kubernetes like two or three year, years ago. Uh, forgot most of it because for for the, the clients I'm now working with, we're based, we're, we're mostly uh, standardizing still on Docker Swarm. Uh, but Docker Swarm has its limits. It's fine for for uh, a lot of first uh, for 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 setups also for large setups i mean you saw that last year at the plone conf where david presented the yep. docker swarm setup for dlr which is not a small instance but still there there are complexities that you can't handle with docker swarm and then kubernetes could be a, a solution again you will also get all the more complexities of the things you want to solve with kubernetes and that's uh that's also that yeah that's that's also something uh, that's even more pay, specialization yes. that's the price to pay 
obviously. Yeah. Uh, that, Moritz gave his first talk in, in, in German and not in English uh, about the release policy. That was um, interesting. Nothing uh, really new uh, about the release policy there, but it was good to communicate that to the German speaking audiences as well. Uh, we had an introduction of Volto Light theme and a couple of case studies. I did a case, a, a mixed case study for of two projects that we did. Um, um, yeah, I got. A, I, I like the the idea that we have one classic and one Volto client, and they're both research institutions with with very similar requirements, but uh, two different technologies. And uh, different approaches to solutions, not because of the technology, but also because of the organizational uh, requirements there um, regarding user profiles, publications, projects, research data, whatever, all that uh, multilingual subsites, uh, whatnot. Uh, so that uh, I, I liked, uh, yeah. I liked giving, yeah. giving that. At um, the beginning, so why uh, why uh, the the uh, 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 why did you leave the university in Gießen? Because they are using clones. So we had an introduction yes. talk by the CIO, which was really a high level. And I must say, I find it interesting from that point because my work is also shifting a bit to more project management and 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 customer relations. It was cool to see, but the numbers were still imp impressive. I, I looked them up again because I took a picture of his of a sheet. They have one central setup, 120,000 pages, 1,600 forms, and 1,400 authors within the university who have edited or are editing and maintaining one or more pages. That's not your uh, uh, your neighborhood uh, 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 volleyball club uh, sports website, so to say. Definitely, that's something we. we going to come to uh, after uh, there were a couple of universities at the event uh, and they used Plone and they've been discussing stuff so uh, after that introduction there was a, a talk uh, about the migration uh, to Plone 6 for uh, of the University of Gießen side that uh, Mike Destappen and me did together uh, It the new version looks as old fashioned yeah. as the old one but it's now no longer Plone 4 and Python 2 but Plone 6 and very modern uh, and they are starting to do a relaunch um, um, using Plone um, in this they're starting this project this year and that's going to be a completely new design and new information architecture but they needed to uh, jump over that uh, migration hurdle first uh, yeah, I think it's it's it, if you normally consider it uh, to sell uh, uh, to sell exactly the same system but with new technology, there's like okay, if the n normal traditional marketing, there you would say, look, if we don't have features, we can't sell the product here. But here, if you if you think about the numbers I just said, fourteen hundred authors, one hundred twenty thousand pages, sixteen hundred forms. It's just too big to do everything at the same time. Yes, it's, it would be a huge product, and as soon as you start changing things, is are, are at least my experience is probably yours. Everybody will start asking questions and can we do things differently? So cutting cutting this uh, this project in two may sound really strange to say, look, we're going to deliver you exactly the same, but with the latest technology, with the latest bootstrap uh, and other front end yes. uh, things in there, is is making the project manageable and and will 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 keep you out of a lot of interference of people who want to do things different right away because you're also changing the foundations. Yes, that, that was a smart solution um, to, to that problem. And a lot of things have changed, uh, but the, 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 the transition was very seamless and uh, painless, I, I, I'd say. Uh, like completely new tiny MCE, um, uh, tiny MCE templates. Um, but for example, we migrated a content panel, something we've talked about in the past at some point, uh, to use in Plone 6. And, but nobody wants to use that anymore once they saw uh, see newer solutions or even Volto, which they're not using uh, at the moment. But yeah. um, what else was good? So, we had a party on Wednesday evening in a Tuesday, Greek restaurant. Tuesday, Tuesday evening. Tuesday well, evening. Well, party. It was it was more like very good food. I had my first yes. uh, 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 mixed grill in fish. That was nice. That was like I, I, whenever you go to a restaurant, they always find it doesn't matter which uh, which which uh, 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 which kitchen or which uh, uh, if you get get Oriental food or, or classical cuisine or French cuisine. There's always 
some mixed grill variation. Now there was a fish mixed grill, which was really interesting. It was a really good Greek uh, restaurant. And we didn't really have the the party like the dancing party that sometimes happens on Plone, uh, uh, Plone comes, but we had really cool conversations and I, I bailed out uh, a little bit before 12 o'clock. <laughs> it was, it was going, that's, uh, it was going, it was still going strong with discussions at the tables and, uh, and the, the friendly people didn't kick us out uh, from the, from the establishment. Um, talks, we had, um, uh, 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 Kitkonsa presented the DLR case, which is of course rather big in Germany and is a well-known institute. Uh, but it, if you want to see it, uh, in English, uh, please see the plan conference talk, but it was, I'm still surprised because I'm, I'm now working for Kit Concept and I'm also involved with this customer. But when I see the numbers, I'm still like, oh my, okay, this is big. It was really interesting to, to see it, uh, to hear it again from uh, just some, some numbers in there from this, uh, from the size of, of research institute that, uh, uh, that, that works uh, with uh, and, and uses Plone for their, for their whole uh, portal. And one talk I have to say, it's, it's like, uh, Good friend of mine in the community. I don't see him that often, but when we when we meet each other at conferences, we can't stop talking uh, with each other. Uh, Armin Stros uh, Raczynski, he had a really, I will just say it. It was just a strange talk. He has his. He can brainstorm for thirty minutes. It has the wildest. He's a brilliant marketeer, um, and he had. A, but he had two things which was really interesting. One of them was the effect of horizontal versus vertical scrolling, and then you realize when he talks about it in in a kind of storytelling presenting information to people we are so uh uh uh, uh so focused on horizontal we're so used to hor to vertical scrolling when you go to pages and now on mobile devices sure that you don't realize that horizontal scrolling is something totally different and the thing was like so you have a you have a, a a website where you have to present a group of people and what you would normally do is place those people under each other. So you would scroll down and you would see like the faces coming by and the face would just like, like the effect would be like, <laughs> so you see, you see faces, you see the faces shifting over by, and that makes them all individuals. And he, he just showed them like, okay, this is a page where I present a group of people, but the pictures are horizontally with their eyes and you just scroll horizontally. And now suddenly it's a group of people who belong together. And the logic is there. If we if we take a group picture during a sprint or a conference, the, normally when you see people, people are on, with their heads on the same level. It's horizontal. That's a group. Vertical people are individuals not working together. Yeah, the the, the mix between vertical and horizontal sc uh, scrolling uh, is becoming a fashion on websites. If you uh, think about um, Apple.com, for example, where they have... Uh, the series on Apple Plus, and they they say, oh, this is Apple Plus, and this is like the main event, the main series, and below that are basically sliders, but they're bigger. They're like uh, like they they put the series or the the movies as a as a team next to each other, and not in a, in a hierarchy like the one is on top and then one next one is on bottom. I I think people are getting used to that uh, approach on websites that sometimes they just have to yeah. scroll vertically yeah. as well. Yeah. But the real contents of his talk, by the way, was about chat interfaces and uh, uh, how you can can like uh, a chat based interface. And we, I was first like, okay, I mean, what now? But we do have a chat interface already in our in our Plone ecosystem, which is the cookie cutter. So when you want to build a new Plone project, you can scaffold it using cookie cutter. And maybe it's a bit far away now, and that was probably not his intention, but uh, he had a, a small like demo of something else he used, and he was like presenting cookie cutter chat jet GPT based style, which was really funny. And it's 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 hilarious, but Still, there's something in a few years, maybe that is how you get new developers, have a chat-based interface to scaffold your project. Just talk like we're talking now uh, to your computer and uh, you will get... Uh, 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 and that was that was one smart thing. And you get a zip file uh, with your project already scaffolded. And that was something that... That, that is nice. You don't have to install cookie cutter. So you, you just get it downloaded, yeah, uh, pre-configured yeah. pre in the way you do it. But there is there are web configuration tools have been around for ages, 
for example, for jQuery or uh, Bootstrap, where you say, this is my version of Bootstrap, but you it's could, not chat-based. It's basically web-based, and we could, we, could, we could do that. Yeah, but it's something like, we, 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 if you look at a cookie cutter, uh, I had experience, and I, I, I know even our release manager uh, a while ago had, a, had an issue with, with cookie cutter where a node version or something small, because you still have to install like 10 to 15 packages, and that all has to go right if you want to use the scaffolding uh, system. So maybe get, creating a web service yes, out of that. Yes, is, I, I, I agree. This is, this is good. But what is even, even better would be uh, because these cookie cutter questions are, do you want a cache server installed with that? Cache what is server? A, yeah, what, what is a cache server? You can ask your chatbot, what, what, do you, what the heck are you talking about? What, what do you want to install? Which cache server? What should it cache? Um, I don't know. Which container registry should you use? You can ask the chatbot, what's yeah. a container registry? Okay, we don't want to reinvent ChatGPT no. here. And, and we certainly don't want the quality of ChatGPT-based code in our plone scaffolding. But answering these questions might be really useful sometimes. Yeah. Even I, I get, uh, what does it want again? I don't know. So, yeah, a lot of inspirational talks, uh, uh, some of them straight to the point, some of them more, 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 more flowery, more uh, looking into the future, uh, like, like Armin's talk. Uh, but that's what the conference uh, is for, uh, uh, mixing, uh, uh, getting, getting new ideas, getting inspiration. And then Definitely. it doesn't really matter which language it is, German or, or English. What I thought was the most interesting thing were the open space of the universities. Universities. We had uh, two sessions of open spaces of university. Open space, if you don't know what that is, is basically um, an empty spot in an empty spot in the schedule. Yeah, but pe people offer something in in that empty spot. Say, I want to talk about. I don't know, courgette, uh, and uh, in room A A14, and people uh, come to A14, and you give a, a maybe a two minute introduction on courgette, and people hate it or they love it, and they stay or they go away. That's basically it. And sometimes it gets uh, really interesting. And in this case, it got really interesting mm -hmm. um, because it's it already or already has a tradition, the open spaces of uh, of universities. So we had. A couple of universities, big ones, uh, a couple were missing uh, who still, uh, who, not still, who use Plone in Germany. And we hope that they're coming at the, uh, to the Plone Tagel next year. Uh, but uh, Plone is very strong in the uh, university sector and the uh, research sector in, in Germany. Uh, so and Austria, they got into and Switzerland. A room. Yes. Uh, Oxford is also Plone, by the way. Uh, so. Um, and there were a couple of things that are really interesting. And the main thing, I think, was that all of the universities that were in the room, and there was five, I think, uh, like it's not, it's not a huge number, but it, it's, it's, it's a decent group of universities. Uh, all of them decided uh, and said that they decided they want to move to Volto within the next four years. And... That is certainly something. And the main reason for that is the very, very positive feedback uh, they got from their users uh, that they showed it to, uh, to the editing experience and the user interface. Um, and that went so far as to one university uh, spilled the beans and said they uh, were in the process uh, already of choosing a new CMS. And the constraints were basically anything but Plone. Uh, a classic example of uh, product fatigue where uh, you work with a product and you get to know the, the problems with it so so much that you start hating it. And the, the, gra that the, we, grass, we just... will the grass will always be greener uh, uh, on, on the, the other end. side or exactly. in the other garden uh, because it, it can't be that bad. And then, of course, we know all that it will be just as bad because it's not only the technology is also how you use it and the difficulty in a very complex setup. Exactly. And we, we've discussed that in this podcast in the past. So what they did is that they uh, built a, a small prototype uh, with Volto and demoed it uh, to the decision makers and a group of editors, I guess. And suddenly Plone was back in the game, and now they're uh, relaunching uh, the website on Plone and Volto. Yeah, yeah. And I thought there is uh, something really uh, big to take away there. 
uh, that is that the investment of the Plone community in, in UX uh, and the ease of editing and the block-based editing of Volto has paid off big time. I know Plone Classic has killer features, uh, actually more than Volto because not everything is, uh, uh, is not yet uh, there in Volto, but most of the things are there. But the uh, the the power of the block based editing is just unmatched, and it is it's just a sale. Yeah, it's an instant sale if you show that. There was also something else you mentioned to me during the week. I don't know if you remember that, but you said with these talks now with with the public agencies, uh, uh, there's also something else that that's that struck me. Like there was no uh, complaining about speed. Yes. And there was no complaining. And then, of course, you can't say that, but there was no complaining anymore about migrations. But that's your that fault. True. That's your fault, uh, mainly that there's no, uh, no, 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 uh, no complaints the, about migrations were... anymore because we, you are one of the, and then, then I'll, I'll put some feathers. My uh, fault. Uh, it's your <laughs> fault. But that, that was like, we always had with large installations, oh, the migrations will be very difficult. Oh, uh, the speed is not good enough. Um, and we had not much of that. And that's also something where you say, okay, we have this unique, uh, 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 much better uh, user experience now for the editors with the blocks-based interface. But a lot of those universities still, like the University of, of, uh, of Gießen, first upgraded to Plan 6 Classic UI uh, with the latest Python version, with a huge cleaned up uh, uh, code base. Uh, the whole front end in Classic UI uses the latest uh, bootstrap now. Require yes is gone. The bundling is, is, is way simpler and more efficient. Um, I also had that feedback from some of my customers uh, who, who didn't go to Volto, but using classic UI, even there, it's it's been a, 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 a yes. pleasant upgrade path towards even more modern stuff with Volto if people decide it. But people can do it, uh, and organizations and, and, uh, and, and, and support groups can do it on their own pace. They can still go first to classic UI Plan 6 and then look at Volto or not, depending, like you also did with your, with your uh, two use cases where you pitch them against each other to similar institutions who uh, were using Classic or, or Volto. But those are basically, well, they seem to be like solved problems. I mean, they're still complex. Of course, a migration is not, we can't fix a migration with, a, with a, like a magic fairy staff and, and your, your, your site is migrated. But it's not... Uh, um, impossible anymore it's like it's non, not incalculable anymore the, these these open spaces used to be basically self-help groups of people <laughs> complaining about plone on, on a very high level because they 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 used to do amazing stuff and they're still doing amazing stuff and uh now it was the the, the self-help thing was basically gone the, the bitching was gone and that was really positive I, I i like that another thing that was interesting uh is that all of them still use build out N not one even those still already running volto are using uh pip or mixed uh pip slash mixed f based installations well, basically pip based install mixed f is, is a yeah. is a very thin layer yeah, to, to support some to support some overrides and, yeah. and checkouts of local packages it's basically a back to pip install yeah so that, that was a very very interesting discussion and uh there's certainly going to be some follow-ups um Another thing that uh, was interesting is it's not that uh, technologically interesting, but the, the, the range uh, of approaches to solutions is interesting uh, when it comes to forms, because universities and forums, uh, they had a very wide range of solutions to the question, do we offer forms and how do we offer forms? And the one end of the range will say we don't, because we don't want to be bothered with the uh, um, data security uh, and, and privacy uh, issues that arise from creating forms, mm -hmm. saving the data or forwarding the data. So no forms whatsoever uh, for editors. Okay, the admins can create forms, but they know what they're doing, but no forms whatsoever for editors on the other hand uh, they have a dedicated easy form installations that run side by side to the website uh, maybe with some additional security but everybody can create forms so there's a wide range of options there uh, obvi obvious uh, um, 
issue with uh, large institutions that they come up with very different solutions. But I, I found the discussion interesting. Okay, let's talk about forms. And one, one group said, no, we don't do that. And the <laughs> other said, yeah, we do it this way and this way. And no, why are you, we should do, you should do it different and much more constrained. It was very interesting. Um, Let's talk about the sprint because yes, um, because we so we had like the, the, it was a full week. Uh, we started on Monday afternoon uh, for people to allow to travel uh, on Monday morning. Um, so we had two and a half days of presentations, but also at the end of the the open spaces were planned in the afternoons where we had like these these interactions. Uh, 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 but then the sprint, and that was really, I, I really enjoyed the sprint this time. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm normally not that good at sprints because I'm everywhere and nowhere and I'm distracted by, by everything, uh, anybody, and especially Armin, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it myself. I'm, I'm just, um, so uh, I, on Thursday, I, uh, I helped a bit in the morning with, with basic setup of things uh, because I'm also in the sysadmin team. I can, I can uh, solve some permission problems. Uh, we had two new uh, core contributors uh, added, right. uh, which we could uh, uh, enlist straight away after they filled in the contributor agreement, uh, so they could help. And yeah, for me, this the sprint really brought together a few things that have been cooking since last year. Uh, we've been talking about. Uh, 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 Having having better uh, uh, demos of Plone, having maybe pre-baked sites where you can uh, uh, already say, look, I want to have a blog and I want to have these and these colors and this is the title and add-ons would be installed and everything uh, would be done. And we, we've been talking about this in the community for years. I remember Erico Andrei uh, uh, bearing this up again last year at the Alpine City Sprint. Uh, where we kind of started with it, we had some ideas, uh, but there were a lot of missing uh, missing parts still. And the, the big missing part uh, uh, of this this demo solution or, or or build up a site very quickly was the demo content. We didn't really have a good story for that, and it seemed like these two days of sprint at uh, Geese and suddenly everything was almost there, uh, uh, and and suddenly all the puzzle pieces started to fit together. Uh, and and well, we uh, uh, we will talk about it later. But I'm go first going to do to pitch it to you now again because you were also uh, very actively with the demo sites and with Plone distributions. Yes, because that's the technology we're talking about, and it's it's, exactly. uh, it's a big reality now. It 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 totally is. And uh, when Erico came uh, to me for the first time talking about that, I was going, yeah, these uh, he did these portals in Brazil in the past. I was not 100% convinced, uh, but uh, as usual, I lacked the imagination, and now I am totally sold on that. And uh, I'm going to demo that to you now also. Uh, so there's gonna, if you're only hearing that, I'm going to try to explain what I'm doing, but you'll see the result. Uh, let me start sharing my screen so we'll, we'll get somewhere there. Uh, yep. Yeah, so what you said, Erica also did a talk on last year's Bone Conference where I was also not, well, I was not completely convinced, but I, I, I saw that, that, many, that, that you can read many different things in, in what Plone Distribution can do. Um, and I, I, in, a, in a talk at the, at the talking with a few people, I also pitched like, look, there's, there's like three main use cases for, uh, for this Plone Distribution thing. First is uh, uh, our demo sites where we would like to have more variation in a demo site and not present an empty or, or a, a, the basic Volto uh, 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 layout or the basic classic UI layout. There are no, there's no demo content in there and there are no, no add-ons installed. We need, to, we need to show use case things. Then the second use case for, for a blown distribution is that you can uh, have a blueprint. for. So if you're interested in, for example, hey, I want to use, I need, I need a, a university portal then you can uh, we can use plone distributions to uh, plone i should present, we talk about plone distributions the package is called plone distribution singular yes um, but you could use you could create blueprints with there and and present inspiration for people already focused on a specific market instead of a generic demo with look oh this is all possible but you can specify it and the third use case for plone distribution is that if you have a, a, a setup where you have a lot of small sites for example, again, university, uh, you don't have a large central portal, but you have like multiple smaller uh, sites, then a plone distribution with a, a kind of question form could can very quickly help you set up 
a small plone site with all batteries included, everything configured uh, in the university or in the institution scholars. Yes. Uh, and that's the third use case uh, for, for plone distribution. That is true. I'm going to demo uh, the first, the uh, demo sites. So this is the new demo.plone.org. And there is also a classic uh, dot demo dot plon dot org, and classic looks almost the same as it used to. Uh, actually, it looks exactly the same. It just has one more item, a form, uh, and uh, the Volto site looks much different now. Uh, that's because we now have demo content, and we have uh, some add-ons. We have Volto Light theme and the form block and some add-ons for Volto Light theme installed uh, that go well with the Volto Light theme, like the uh, highlight block and the separator block and stuff like that. So, um, but that is, it's not a one-off. It used to be, uh, the demo sites used to be, the, the Volto side was empty, basically, except for the front page and the classic side uh, was a installation uh, set up based on ZX export and import. So automatically the ZX was imported by the setup handler. So the whole demo uh, folder was created uh, by a ZX, which was uh, surprisingly fast and stable, but not super flexible because you have to edit it. You have to export the ZX. You have to add it to the repository. You have a format that is not transparent because it's basically serialized pickles. Um, so not not what re you really want. So I have this demo site running on localhost uh, 3030. I'm going to show you that here. Uh, the same demo.plon.org is just running locally. This is the um, this is the back end. I start the back end with make start, and I go to the back end of the same site. So I'll go to localhost 8080 and I'm going to delete the site that is there using uh, the um, ZMI, obviously. That's one way to do it. And when you have Plone distribution installed, you get a different front page uh, where you can select the available distributions. And here there's one distribution available because it's uh, configured, configured like that. It's called Volto Demo. And I click on Create and say, uh, yeah, OK, name is Plone, create example content, submit. And uh, it, it doesn't look very different, by the way, but you can add more and more more questions. You can make this form much bigger with extra questions, but this is the yes. basic setup for the demo site. Just to Exactly. Say, yeah. And it uh, it created the site so that was very fast. And it's, uh, this is the demo. This is the old one. So now I reload localhost 3030 and I get the same content. So now it gets interesting. Now I log in. Uh, admin, admin, super secret. It's actually written on the front page. So demo site is for editing. This is yeah. nothing secret I spill here. And I'm we, gonna and we reset them every few hours. So you yes. can upload some stuff there, but it's so gone. I'll, uh, what am I doing? I'm going to edit the front page because that's going to be very visible. I'm uh, going to pick one of the, um, the sliders here and move that to the right here. Uh, check. Okay, small change, and and I'm changing the uh, hour to the, and I'm gonna save. That's all I'm gonna do. I, I could do much more, but I'm just gonna do that. I could add content and link content and publish or add private content, and whatnot. And now I can go back to the back end and can use a view called dist underscore export underscore all. So this is all based on collective export import because the collective export import is a dependency of plone distribution. And I get a form where I can click export all and I get uh, it's already done. It exported all the content. And when I uh, stop that... Where, Philip? Where does it export the content to? Yeah, it, it exports <laughs> the content into the package where the distribution is registered. So when I say git diff now, I can see all the changes that are done, like the date has changed and so on. And now when I start it again, uh, I could commit that. And uh, a couple of hours from now, the demo site is uh, is different. But I could just test it before, and I'm going to do that now. Oh, I'm I'm using a different approach. 
Uh, there's also make create site, delete the existing site, make create site. Uh, doing that and it's done. Make start and it's running and I'm going to localhost 3030 and you remember uh, reload and I moved the penguin in the middle to the right and it now says the modern live theme. So these changes are now permanent. Uh, not in my database, but in the demo content that I can commit to the repository. And uh, that is, that's very powerful. And uh, I got it so far. I'm going to do a lightning talk about that at the uh, Volplone Day, that in a very complex, in a really, really complex project uh, for a client uh, in Germany where we have a view that creates demo content and it's ugly as hell and it's very horrible um, because it's like eight, a thousand lines of code that creates demo content and it links it to each other because it's very, com it's not like, okay, create 500 sites with different content. It's, it's a very complex application like setup. I um, rewrote, I deleted the whole thing and I imported the demo content from the, from this view, updated it, changed it, exported it as a distribution, and I'm importing it again. So even even it's it's not merged yet, but in in really in real life, even complex, really complex use cases, you can use a clone distribution to create demo content, which is a, a really hard necessity for uh, testing uh, complex changes or even even. For, from by clients i'm not talking about automatic no. testing uh, but you can okay we changed this can you please test it and they get a database with very complex uh, demo content where all of this is already visible and as a developer i don't have to write any code i just create the content in the way uh, that the client is able to uh, test the feature that I just uh, changed, which is super powerful. And there's there's some really nitty gritty technical details here. Like I said, the, the, uh, this was uh, um, mainly, uh, so this this all came together to in, in uh, at, at those two days at the end of the, the two sprint days after the, uh, the Tagung presentation days. Uh, but for example, what's so, so nice about this is that you have kind of round trip uh, but also, I, I know because I, I, I helped you and many other people helped you with collective export import. But we had this export import. Uh, 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 export import was mainly focused on on helping migrations uh, going from uh, a previous plone version to a new plone version. And we really didn't we didn't care that much about the intermediate format because we export everything in JSON. So you could s say, okay, export all my content in one big JSON uh, uh, file. Uh, but it becomes for this use case becomes very ugly because then yes. you would have a like like a 200 megabyte JSON file uh, in your uh, in, in your Git repository, and as soon as you would load it in your site, make a new export, you would get a diff for this one 200 megabyte file. So to make this possible, the in the collective export import, the export format was changed to a new kind of directory structure with all kinds of. Uh, 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 um, how you say that in English, with all kinds of small specifications, so that when you change one content item, only this file or this folder with a name and an ID, it's really clever, we can't go into uh, detail. You also helped a lot with this, Philip. Uh, others uh, made, made contributions here. Uh, and this is one of those small things that, that enables this, where, where, like we said before in other talks, collective export import uh, depends on, uh, on on the serializers that were added for Volto, and now this distribution adds on uh, depends on on the work first done and 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 kind of explored with collective export import, but now focused laser focused on this uh, on this round trip of of, uh, of of content import and export again in the Git repository where you only have a very small change set, so it becomes manageable to create all kinds of this distributions exactly it's I'm, I'm i'm super happy we we had a couple of uh, annoying issues that we had to fix during the sprint uh, to make volto sites uh, portable like uh, distribution ready uh, regarding uh, serializers of volto image uh, data and yeah some some other things uh, needed to be fixed 
but we found all the problems and we solved it and it's uh, really um, it's looking really great uh, I found a, another bug uh, just uh, two days ago basically files were not exported at all because of the serializer was uh, registered in the wrong way but that's fixed now uh, so the demo sites will have examples for files in uh, a couple of days once that's done the tag was two day two weeks ago if you look at how long it took uh, uh the community uh to to stabilize export import with all the edge cases that we found in previous blown versions that's also interesting with this uh um so just a heads up for erico because uh you already also know that we want to have export import in core uh, yes. but it will be a trimmed down version where uh we will uh, uh uh, we will strip all the information uh, uh, or the code necessary for for jumping over blown versions, but because this is like what we said with universities or institutions not complaining about migrations anymore, you can migrate from blown three to blown six if you want, because it's extract uh, uh, to a, se a central uh, uh, intermediary JSON format and then import. Uh, but there's a lot of edge cases that we solve there that we don't really need for this distribution case because that's something we have to make clear. The the export import only works for Plone Six. This is also uh, a kind of you can export parts of the content and import them again, and we will have to look at that. But this this will also open up uh, uh, if we have this a uh, 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 bit more stable uh, uh, and our distributions going. This will also open up uh, possibilities to transfer content between sites. Yes because it will be a universal intermediate format where you can store information on disk and you can uh, 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 and you can load it up again yeah it's it's exactly the same as collective export import but it's hard to put that in core because it has all these uh, python it needs to be python 2 compatible and needs to support archetypes and whatnot it's nothing that we want to have as a hard dependency so erico started Plone.export import. It's nice. Uh, it's actually, it's not small. It's it's still big because most of the stuff still needs to be there, but it's it's much, uh, yeah, less if uh, and and uh, yeah. except import error yeah. and yeah. stuff like that. And you have a lot I'm of looking hooks. forward to that. Yeah, you have a lot of hooks, and I can uh, give you a small new. You can check it out because one of the first versions has gone online on the Plone organization yesterday. I think oh, nice. he pushed the first version yesterday. So Good. check out Plone slash Plone distribution. Maybe he will be a bit mad, but uh, okay, he he wanted he wanted to be mentioned so as a Plone president. Yeah. So now he's ex Plone president. We will still mention him, but then it will be uh, the fruit of his work because he put a lot of effort in there. So the first version of Plone distribution, uh, uh, sorry, the, the first uh, version of Plone, Plone export, export import, import import is there now, uh, which is uh, uh, cleaned up and only focused on this uh, uh, on this export import of current uh, uh, Plone content for Plone six. So, but this this wasn't everything at the sprint. We did a lot of other things, and one thing I'm uh, excited about was inspired by a talk by Andreas Jung uh, about uh, TypeSense, which is a uh, I'm told a high performance search engine. Uh, and uh, Mike Derstappen and uh, Thomas uh, um, Lotze started working on Plone dot TypeSense. Uh, which will be a uh, add-on for Plone to include uh, Volta, um, to include TypeSense as you used to include uh, Solar with Collective Solar, for example. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done to finish that, uh, but that's uh, exciting because it's a very, very uh, fast and powerful search uh, engine. And uh, Mike has some experience with that because of the add-on gallery thing that is based on TypeSense. So there was a good, a good use case uh, to sprint on. Yeah, and also interesting was that we uh, we're talking now we, we got into development uh, mode again and talking about development, but there was also a group of people who used an open space and this and the and the sprint where they uh, uh, on the high level as users they uh, 
they, they discussed for half of the morning how a university distribution should look like. And this is really interesting because you get from the people who are using Plone, who have who are surfacing their or, or, or maintaining their Plone uh, uh, site for a university, you get direct feedback like, okay, if you make a demo, then at least you would have to, to show this and this and this. You would have to have uh, contact persons. You would have to have a section on, on, on study, but also on research. Uh, you would have to show that you can have multiple uh, 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 layers of, of institutional organization uh, with uh, departments or research institutes or other things. So we got a, re a lot of valuable feedback to to use Plone Distribute. To, so we had a core technology uh, developed uh, and, and finalized somewhat with, with uh, one and a half years of, of, of work on, in different areas. But we also at the same time had like the users who gave feedback on, okay, if you want to create a university distribution, then this and this and this and this should be in there and we should maybe name it like this and this. And also there you saw, like you said, with, uh, with uh, one institution using forms and the other saying, no, no, don't, don't. Also there you got this, 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 this discussion uh, sometimes heated like no it should be this or no we use it this way and, and then the beauty is because then <laughs> i couldn't resist to say but we can make more distributions exactly. because once we have one distribution we can make uh, we can make a variation of the distribution specifically for a research institute versus um more uh, 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 studying, study uh, uh, student-oriented uh, uh, educational uh, university. You can you can make small changes there, and Plone, Plone integrators can can use the distributions later to pitch uh, uh, to pitch Plone uh, in, in in projects and and use the distribution as a basis, but adopt it for this specific client or for a more specific demo. The, the possibilities are endless here. I think that's the that for me that's the main use case uh, using uh, these uh, Plone distributions. It's actually online uh, as Plone.edu, uh, not as a website, as the repository. The first steps are there uh, in the collective, and that to use that to pitch Plone to demo what what Plone can do f uh, for the use case of a university. And there's still the the jury is still out if this can then be a uh, a blueprint that you can build upon or steal from or actually the base of a real project. I'm uh, skeptical skeptical about uh, using that in a real project because uh, the differences in organizations are um, look look small. Uh, from afar, but when you go into detail, uh, they have uh, very strong opinions about very minor details that can't be like this, but have to be like that. But, but then you still never, they... nevertheless, you can still use it and uh, build up on that, work from there, and change it uh, the way you want it. And that is that's very very. Powerful. It's not a closed source product. It's still open no, source, so exactly. you can still have what we have done for uh, twenty years and more. You can still completely customize everything. It's just the ramp up for uh, for for finding the product fit. Uh, uh, can can he use this? That's that's where this is a huge game changer. Definitely. Also, also, uh, so demoplone.org is now using photo lighting. Uh, Classic UI, uh, the, the classic UI demo can st also benefit from Plone distribution, uh, but we still have to make some more content there. Um, but I think the Plone Foundation is really, uh, and also if you look at like marketing uh, from a marketing point of view, uh, uh, the more for now, the more distributions we have, the happy, the happier I think uh, the marketing team will be and the Plone community team will be. Definitely, so demo something Plone to show off. So demoplone.org now has photo light team as, as one of the more uh, uh, evolved uh, uh, add-ons uh, or, or themes in an add-on for photo. Um, but uh, we can have like three or four more distributions when they get developed now by the community, like a university distribution is, is maybe a bit too big. Uh, but we could could have more variations distribution. So once people start using this and 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 have an idea for a distribution, or maybe their integrator company has a different uh, theme and want to show this theme uh, also as well. Um, if it's for the rest uh, neutral, uh, then I'm up for having a, a demo one, demo two, demo three, and demo four dot <laughs>
And the, and uh, Philip, the setup is there. You helped it. We fixed the last bugs there last week. If you, uh, it's all yeah. open. If you want to set it up, look at uh, uh, github.com slash plone uh, slash demo plone.org and you see the distribution, how it's working there. You can you can uh, fork it and, and create a, a distribution variation. And if it's uh, if it looks nice and it shows off a lot of open source available add-ons, uh, we can just uh, add it add it to the to our demo list. That's true. And there is a cookie cutter for Plone distributions. Um, we'll link it uh, to it in the show notes, so you can create your own distribution using a cookie cutter that'll just do most of the thing. You'll have to add your add-ons and the content, obviously. There was also something uh, classic. Um, a pain point in classic it has always been the relation uh, widget, uh, related items widget. It's based on select2, which is a JavaScript library um, for selecting items yeah. from a list. But what, and, happens, but what happens is in JavaScript land, you pick uh, any library or solution and it gets deprecated after three or four years and you're stuck to maintaining it yourself. And that's how our relation uh, uh, related items widgets turned out. Uh, it, it is still kept alive. It works in Plone 6.0 uh, uh, with a lot of love from, from community members to keep it up and running, but it's really based on, on a branch with a patch of something from select2 uh, 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 from uh, the last century. Century. Exactly. And it, it cannot select more than one item at a time. So if you're looking to uh, add multiple related items, uh, that's not possible unless you click and then you close and then you click again. That's really annoying. And uh, Peter Mattis and Mike Destappen worked during, uh, on that during the sprint and there is a prototype and it's gotten really far yet already. It is using Svelte, I think, for the JavaScript stuff. And it looks really nice and it allows multiple selections, has image preview and, yeah, basically um, a, a better uh, image picker, link picker, related items picker, because these are all the same widget. If you're in TinyMCE, if you upload an image, if you uh, try to insert an image and uh, select it from the site, if you select a link target from the site when you create a link, uh, that's all the same thing, like uh, same uh, uh, field as the related items field uh, in the uh, what is this categorization tab when you have content open? Yeah. Yeah, so Svelte, is a, nice. Svelte is a really cool small JavaScript framework where you don't have a base library that needs to load it first and then it does stuff. Svelte directly compiles to 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 uh, uh, fix JavaScript as a small bundle. You can load the bundle. Um, and it also supports out of the box. I, I'm not sure if the others do that as well, but Svelte at least supports uh, custom elements out of the box, which is like a core web technology where you can just build your own new HTML tags. Uh, so it's really distributable. Uh, uh, and it's also used now in this, in this, uh, in this new related items, uh, which it, uh, which like you said, Peter, uh, Matisse and Michael Stappa are, are building. Yeah. To, to wrap up about the Plone Tagung, um, I thought it was a very useful event to get in touch with the German community or the German speaking community. I'll include you because you gave a talk in English, uh, in, in German, sorry. Uh, <laughs> You're mixing it up God, now. Mixing the languages. Our, our release manager got, uh, got some yes. practice and did his first talk in yes. German, which was really cool. He apologized uh, in advance, but he did, Boris did really well. He's, it, he's, he did a great uh, job. Yeah. And um, we'll, this, Probably going to be another Plontagung next year. Uh, there are rumors that the University of Bonn might be open to hosting that. I'm not sure if that's going to come true. Um, but Ooh, dangerous name dropping. Yeah, let's uh, put, but up let's some, see. That's put some like, pressure on. But it's really cool that we have these institutions that already have yes. the rooms available. Uh, exactly. Uh, and that's a really big help uh, to, to organize this. And I mean, it, still, it lowers it's... cost. Uh, obviously, yeah. it needs to be in, in uh, not holiday season, like not during uh, teaching month. I don't know how that's called in English. Vorlesungsfreie uh, Zeit in Germany. Um, yeah, but you have to, yeah, you have to, you have to have some space where you can use an auditorium, and there are not students in there learning about biology it, or exactly. uh, chemistry or whatever. So they they kind they try to schedule it outside yeah. the outside the study weeks. Yeah. We'll also do a couple of changes. Try to focus more on clients, uh, a in advertising also, but also in the acquiring of talks. So we'll try to get some more case studies. 
so that uh, people who are not core developers, because, because core developers will and always come. We don't have to advertise to them. They're they're probably coming anyway. Uh, but uh, people who are using Plone or uh, need to administer Plone and uh, want to figure out what's going on, uh, that they are more attracted to the that event. And so, yeah. also, we'll try to have the schedule uh, on the online a bit earlier than uh, I don't know one week before the event, which is yeah. cutting it pretty close. So I'd say yes. Thank you for this year's uh, hosting uh, uh, hosting university, uh, Justus Liebig University. Uh, a few people there. I think Peter Henning was the main uh, support there for the Plone community to get a lot of local uh, things fixed. But I also saw two or three other office colleagues sitting in front a few times who uh, helped. Yes. And this time a really big thank you to Mike De Stappen. Uh, yes. who organized most of the uh, Plone Tagung from the Plone community side, uh, which takes a lot of time, even if you have all the facilities there and the catering is taken care of. There's sponsoring, there's the talks, there's the communication. Cat uh, Speak, Getting speakers cat to submit uh, their talks is yes. a hard job. And talking, did again, it great. Yeah, and talking again about my greatest distractor at the at the Tagung, uh, Armin. Armin again did a lot of nice work on the on the on the printing the cards, on the uh, posters there, on the schedules. Uh, so it's really cool how you see how these people support, uh, uh, how that this is really is a, is a people supported uh, 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 event uh, where a lot of cool things come together. Yeah, it's uh, it's very low key. Oh God, we're over one hour again. Yes, we managed. Oh, I managed. I managed again. Yes. Y it's... Your last sentence was too long. <laughs> we, we have some news, but we'll not go into much detail there. Basically, some Plone releases uh, 6, uh, 6.0.10.1 because there was a bug in folder contents, but I think that was actually at the last event. Um, we already had it already. There. Yeah. But Volto 18 uh, saw basically daily alpha releases. We're now at alpha 23. Uh, mostly bug fixes, no really big features since we last spoke. Well, uh, there is, there is, I can update you on that. So there's, there's a, it's not experimentation anymore, but Volto, uh, so for Volto 18, the, uh, the, the Plone Volto repository was converted to a monorepo where the different packages are now uh, uh, under a packages repository, uh, sorry, packages f uh, folder. Uh, there's also been a lot of use of uh, uh, PNPM, a more efficient version of NPM, uh, which also is, is more capable of handling these monorepos and other things. And that's about as far as my technical knowledge goes, because I'm still the Python uh, developer and more, uh, uh, I do, do a little bit of everything. Uh, but I hear from my colleagues at Git Concept uh, and also others uh, in, in the in the photo team meetings that the the photo 18s uh, are are now they, they are trying to to make the setup much easier in JavaScript land with using the multiple packages also add-ons. There have been some some tests uh, before with using, for example, uh, Docker to run an add-on. But as you know, from the past where you would have this, this build out CFG in your add-on and it would repeat everything and, and build the whole site again per add-on. But if you want to, to test the add-on, you, you would have to use this isolated version and your project version. This is where some, some new uh, ways are found also to use uh, 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 PNPM for your add-ons. So if you want to follow up there, uh, that's so really interesting. No more project, only add-ons all the way down. Basically, add-ons all the way down, and you don't have a separate uh, project scaffolding uh, thing where where you have a project folder with a config. You have the Volto, yeah, which, the which Volto can have package. conflicting versions, which is annoying because you don't, as a as a non-pro, you don't know oh which version it was going to be picked if I specify two different ones. Yeah, so I'm too high level and not into JavaScript world. I'm I'm still working on my on my on my on my first Volto projects and and learning there and and getting used to the uh, to the to the React front end and and. And uh, it's fe feeling a bit like a newbie again. But there's some really interesting work there now going in Volto 18. It's not like the, like the big features that's going in there, but it's the whole ecosystem and using the, the latest and greatest things in the JavaScript ecosystem also inside uh, Volto and for Volto further development. So if you're into that, check it out. Um, also, Volto 18, there was a meeting this week on uh, the Volto Headless CMS interest group in the Plone community uh, where you can use uh, those 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 
packages that are now in the mono repo. So only, for example, uh, uh, the REST the, the REST API the JavaScript client, components. the registry. Uh, the, um, uh, if you want to use TypeScript, you can use TypeScript now with Volto, but you need the type definitions. Those are separate in add clone types, for example, which is also again a package. So this is, there's, a, there's really a really uh, a cool, interesting uh, uh, JavaScript ecosystem stuff going on there in Volto 18. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's tons going on. That's, it's really interesting. I'm trying to follow, but um, it's uh, some, some stuff is just flying. And we all have to learn it, Philip, if you want to continue yeah. talking about it in the, in the Plow Newsroom. Definitely. Room. Yeah. That's, <laughs> Never that's why, why we're here. Uh, so uh, Never that we to learn. Uh, yeah, we don't die stupid. Um, so next, last, last but not least, uh, Volplone Day is coming up uh, mid April. April, which day is it again? Uh, you're, okay, you're, put you 70, on the spot 70, there. 17, I think. I, sh I should know this. I'm on the marketing team as well. We discussed yeah. it last week. There's a cool new banner. There's a cool new art uh, artwork for World Plone Day. Um, there is a registration form on Plone.org. If you have talks, talks are coming in. Uh, yes. Thank you all for the people who already contributed there. Uh, but if you want to give a talk in whichever language about whichever area uh, on Plone uh, uh, you fancy or want to talk about, uh, please submit a small uh, talk. There's a form on Plone.org. Yeah. And it's indeed we're, on April 17th. Yes, it is April 17th. And we're planning to do a World Plone Day episode in German again. Um, let's see if we can make that happen. Okay. Uh, thanks for tuning in and have a great night and uh, see you soon. Bye. See you soon. Bye, Philip. Talk Bye, to you Philip. later.